Hello there, and welcome to Play the Game with Steve. Villains Beyond, Episode 12, Kang the Conqueror. In this video, we're going to take a look at this very unique scenario and all its uh, temporal mechanics. Uh, we are going to take a look at Kang and all the things that he is going to throw at us. We're going to take a look at his different stages and uh, his different uh, personalities or different uh, personas that he will embody. We're going to take a look at some of the rules that might be missed or uh, misinterpreted. And then finally, we're going to take a look at some of the modular sets that we can include to enhance his overall thematics, uh, difficulty, or just for the lulls. In this, uh, in this episode of Villains Beyond, Kang. All right, so Kang the Conqueror here has six different iterations on Expert and on Standard. So there's two ways to play Kang. So you must decide if you're going to play him on Standard or Expert as you choose. And then you will take six versions of the Standard or the six versions of the Expert. Uh, on all versions, he is a temporal uh, with traded. He is on standard, going to start with a scheme of one, an attack of two, 12 hit points per player. He will have toughness, a forced interrupt. When Kang attacks you, you can either place a threat on the main scheme or he gets plus two for that attack. And then when defeated, you will advance the main scheme to stage two at the end of the phase. If you decide to find him on expert mode, he will have a scheme of one and attack of three. He will also enter with toughness and will have 15 hit points per player. He will have the same force interrupt and when defeated as standard mode. Once you defeat the first stage of Kang, uh, you will move at the end of the phase. So after you've drawn your cards, you will move on to a stage two Kang. There's a possibility of four different Kangs. So in a four player game, you will each go to your own individual Kang. Uh, each Kang will have a specific set of hit points. On standard, they will all have 18 hit points. On expert, they will all have 22 hit points. And they will all have a when defeated, uh, that uh, depending on how many players you are, you will remove the uh, main scheme that is in front of you. And then at the end of the phase, you will join another player's game area. So again, after you draw on your cards, you will join somebody else. All right, let's take a look at those uh, variants of Kang. So the first one is Immortus. Uh, on standard, he will have a scheme of two and attack of two toughness. And the villain cannot take damage while a minion is in play. On expert mode, Immortus will have a scheme of three and attack of two. Toughness and the same uh, that he cannot take damage while a minion is in play. Then you will might fight Iron Lad, Kang the variant Iron Lad. Uh, on standard, he will have a scheme of one and attack of two. Retaliate one and toughness. On expert mode, he'll have a scheme of two and attack of three. Uh, retaliate one and toughness, and that is for Iron Lad. Or you might fight Ramatut, uh, the other variant. So Kang Ramatut in standard mode will have a scheme of one and attack of two, toughness, and this villain will get plus one attack for each obligation in play. Uh, and then on expert mode, he will have a scheme of two and attack of three, toughness, and the same little asterisk, plus one for each obligation in play. And then finally, you might fight Kang the Scarlet Centurion, and then he will have a scheme of zero and an attack of three, toughness, and his attacks will gain piercing on standard, a scheme of one, an attack of four with toughness, and again, his attacks will gain piercing on expert mode. So one of these four will be your friend. And finally, once you've defeated all, all of those variants, or depending on the number of players you are, you will end up the game versus Kang the Conqueror again, but on his final form, stage three. You will have on standard mode, a scheme of two and attack of two. He will have toughness, the same force interrupt that he had on stage one, which is Kang attacks you. You can place a threat on the main scheme, or he will get plus two for that attack. And then when you defeat this Kang, the players will win the game and he has 20 hit points per player. And on expert mode, he will have a scheme of three and attack of three. Toughness, the same force interrupt to either place a threat or he gets plus two attack. And the same when defeated, you defeat this guy, you win the game at 25 hit points per player. 
All right, the main scheme has a setup ability. Uh, you set each Kang 2 and Kang 3 and Kang's Dominion side schemes aside. You remove each player's obligations cards from the game, and then you shuffle the encounter deck. And then when you go to Kang's arrival on stage 1B, there is a when reveal to deal each player an encounter card. The main scheme will start at zero, has a maximum of seven per player. And it says, if this stage is completed, the players lose the game. So you must defeat uh, your Kang in order to move on to the second part. When you're reaching to the Master of Time, which is... 2A of the main scheme, when reveal, you'll place one acceleration token here for each side scheme in play. And then you'll discard each of those side schemes. And each player will reveal a random stage 3A in turn order. And then you'll remove any unused stage 3 schemes from the game. And then when this flips, it has no maximum, nothing, nothing. A force interrupt, though. Uh, the main scheme will have when an acceleration token would be placed on another scheme, place it here instead. And it says players cannot join this game area unless there are no other game areas remaining. When all players have joined this game area, advance to stage 4A. All right, the Chronopolis. Uh, has a when revealed, you'll create your own game area and place this scheme in it. You'll add Kang Immortus to the game area and then deal yourself an encounter card. Very important. I used to forget this a lot. On stage 3B, uh, it will start at zero and start at and goes up by one. And this is regardless of the number of players in this zone area, in this set aside area. There is a maximum of nine, which is on all of them the same. And on all of these main schemes, all have the same force response that after this stage is completed, you'll place one set aside Kang's Dominion face down under stage 4A. And at the end of the phase, you'll remove Kang Immortus uh, from the end this stage from the game area and combine your game area with another game area. So what does that mean? There's a lot of game areas here. So what it means, because we're all divided, uh, if, you, if this goes, it reaches nine, at the end of the phase, this will go away. We're going to put a Kang's Dominion uh, under stage 4A, and then we're going to join another player's area. So if you lose this, you did not lose the game, and that is very important. The other thing that's important, even if there is uh, three players here, it still only goes up by one. Not only that, the villain only has this, rem this amount of hit points, and that does not augment with the more players you add. So, inoxorable Fate, uh, when revealed, you'll create your own uh, game area and place the scheme in it. You'll add Kang Iron Lad to the game area and deal yourself an encounter card again. And then if this one different is gonna start at one threat and goes up by one, again, maximum of nine. And again, the same force response. And again, same thing as the last one. The Realm of Ramatut will have the same text. When revealed, you'll deal yourself an encounter card and place Ramatut there. And when you flip it, it starts at one, goes up by one, maximum of nine, and then same force response. And then finally, the present and future war. Same when revealed, you'll create your own area. You'll add this guy, and then you'll deal yourself an encounter card. And then finally, the same... But this one starts at two, goes up by one. Again, maximum of nine. Force response, the same as all the other four. Last thing that's important to mention, while you are in the separate areas, any card that says per player, add threat per player, any of those cards will only be affected by the person or persons in that play area. So if you are two, uh, and it's going to say add two per player, so you add four. But if you're by yourself, even if you're in a four-player game, when that side scheme gets revealed, it's only going to add, let's say, two per player. It's only going to add two because there's only two in that temporal zone. All right, now finally, the final stage, 4A. Uh, what is this? When revealed, you reveal Kang stage three and add him to the game area. You'll re reveal each phase down Kang's Dominion under this stage. And what are Kang's Dominions? Let's take a look. 
Uh, Kang's Dominions here. If you lost any of the other, uh, if you weren't able to defeat any or all of the other Kangs, you will be placing Kang's Dominions that will come in at three per player. Uh, and Kang cannot take damage. And then when defeat, the deal the player who defeated this scheme and encounter card. So all, so if you have, if you're playing a four player game, there's four of those. Uh, you're going to have to get rid of all of them before being able to deal damage to Kang. And then when you flip it, it starts at zero. It goes up by one per player. It has a maximum of 10 per player. And it has a when revealed, each player searches the encounter deck, discard pile, and set aside area for their nemesis minion and puts it into play, engage with them, and then you shuffle the encounter deck. Uh, and then if this stage is completed, the players will lose the game. So a big finale. Kang is teleporting all of your nemesis uh, to fight alongside him. So this is going to be an epic finale. All right. One of the great things about Kang, and we're going to take a look at his, uh, his signature cards right now, is Kang comes at you with multiple different attacks and, and counter cards. And one of the most unique ways that Kang comes at you is with obligations you remember we took out our obligations before we started the game why is that because kang is going to bombard you your play area with obligations the first one is called depowered now all these um, uh these obligations have the same temporal keyword uh they are all alter ego actions uh and this says you cannot play hero specific cards as an alter ego action you'll have to discard a hero specific card from your hand to discard this card then he will throw some weakened at you and a forced response after you use a basic hero power take one damage what is that what is the basic hero power so this is attack thwart or defend this is a basic hero power so remember attacking thwarting or defending will deal you a damage but if you go to alter ego you'll be able to discard a physical resource from your hand and this is not pay a physical resource you must discard that so this is very important you need to discard a physical to be able to discard this obligation then we have the time travel hijinks and this one's brutal uh, when revealed you'll discard the highest cost card you control then place it face down under this card uh, and as an alter ego action you can discard a lightning resource from your hand you discard this obligation and then you discard each face down card under this obligation and you just discard it to your uh your discard pile and then finally the stolen memories all right and this is when revealed you place the top eight cards of your deck face down under this card and then alter ego action you have to discard a mental resource from your hand and discard this obligation and all the cards that are under stolen memories will go to the discard pile for the memories of a lifetime recall 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 little clarification if you have less than eight cards in your deck remaining at the time of this uh, when revealed, you will just put whatever the maximum amount of cards is. So if it's four, it's four. If it's two, it's two. If it's one, it's one. Uh, obviously, you will just put the whatever amount of cards under the stolen memories, and then you will deal yourself another encounter card. Uh, but you don't reshuffle and then put more underneath. That's clarification. All right, then he comes at you with different side schemes. All right, the first one he's going to come at you with is corrupted time stream this starts into play with two there's a players cannot uh, trigger alter ego actions abilities on obligations so while that is in play you cannot get rid of those other obligations as a when revealed each player must either discard a random card from their hand or place two threat here so that can be really brutal and hard to remove then he also has a pin down which has a crisis icon. It says, when revealed, you place two threat here for each obligation in play. So if you let them stack up and you're like, I'll just deal with them later, just deal with them later, this might just end your game. So very, very dangerous. Then he has two copies of Rampage, and this has a uh, four threat when it comes in. 
Rampage also has a when defeated discard card from the top of the encounter deck until a minion is discarded. And then you put that minion into play, engage with the player who defeated the scheme. There's two copies of this and they also have acceleration tokens. So that's it for the side schemes. Let's look at his attachments. So he has two copies of Temporal Shield. That is a tech that attaches to Kang as a force interrupt when Kang is attacked. And this has to be from an attack. So overkill damage will work. Um, you will discard Temporal Shield. You will prevent all damage from this attack and deal one damage to the attacker. Max one per attack. So what does that mean? So he can have both of these on him at any time. So let's say you attack with a character, an ally for one, and then you would discard one of them even if he has two in play. And then the attacker will take one damage. Again, what did I mean? So let's say you have an attack of, let's say, seven with overkill. Uh, you can go bypass this temporal shield with the overkill damage. Same for... Uh, uh, tag teams which are not attacks anything that's not an attack that can deal damage uh, plan b type effects yonborn type effects can still deal damage to him which is not an attack so very important to know the other tech that he has and this is a very dangerous one it is another uh, tech weapon it is the future weapon attached to kang uh, and that gives him plus two attack. And when Kang attacks, the attack gains overkill. And this attack deals damage to a hero. That hero is stunned. And after this attack, you discard future weapon. So this one, he can still have two on him. But if he attacks uh, with two on him, both of them will get discarded. Not like the temporal shield. Then he has one final attachment, which is frozen in time. You will attach this to your identity as a force interrupt when attached character would ready. You discard, discard instead. It also has a boost effect that says attached to your identity. There you go. So that is coming and freezing you no matter what. Then he has a few treacheries that are pretty nasty. The first one is past machinations. So this one will have Insight 1. You'll place one threat on the main scheme when this card is revealed. And then when revealed, each player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for a different obligation and reveals it and then shuffle the encounter deck. Now, two things here that we need to clarify. Uh, if uh, there's only, let's say, if you're in a four-player game and there's only one obligation left, well, the first player will get the obligation and then the second player in turn order. And if there's none left, in either the discard pile or the encounter deck then you just revolve as much as possible again uh if uh if uh, there's only two of the same left uh you will just search the discard pile for one of them and then the other one you will not attach it to the other person so let's say there's only two uh stolen memories uh, in the deck and discard pile left, well, you will attach the first one and then the other one, you can just leave it in the discard pile or in the encounter deck, uh, up to you. So that's how that works, past machinations. Then we have manipulated time stream. When revealed, discard each event from your hand. And if no events are discarded this way, discard gain surge. So that is really, really rough, especially if you're playing a character that runs a lot of events. Hi, Gamora, Ms. Marvel. Then we have the time travel hijinks, and this one is another tough cookie here. Time travel hijinks is a card that has surge. That means you'll deal yourself another encounter card. It has a when revealed, so each player takes one indirect damage for each obligation in their play area. So if you let those obligation piles up, they can really hurt. And as a boost effect, this card will gain an extra boost for each obligation in your play area. So if you don't have any obligations, there's none. But the effect as a when reveal is each player. Uh, and that's only if you are all together. If you're in your own separate timeline, then doesn't matter. And then the final one is the two copies of Energy Blast. And this as an alter ego action, you'll discard an ally or support you control. And if you can't, it'll gain surge. But if a energy blast, you are in hero form, Kang will attack you. So that's it for the treacheries. And then finally, his last cards, 
we have Macrobots. I know he's got three copies of those. Uh, Macrobots are a scheme of one, attack of two, robots and temporal. They have four hit points. They have guard and retaliate, and they all have the same boost effect to give Kang a tough status card. And that is it for his kit. All right, now it's time to look at the ways that we can change up the modular sets to enhance the overall thematics, uh, difficulty, and just the plain enjoyment of Kang. So uh, the first recommendation, because Kang is master of the temporal stream, I really, really enjoy the future past modular set that we got from Mutant Genesis that features Bastion and Nimrod. Again, these are uh, characters from alternate realities and alternate future timelines. So this very thematically for me goes in. It also has a couple of nasty side schemes, the Bastion's Machinations and Nimrod's Portal. And then finally, the Nano Sentinel Tech, which you go and find your nemesis and add plus four hit points to him. So for me, this was very, very good because Kang is already doing that nemesis thing. So now you go and search for him again. So it's another opportunity for your nemesis to come back before the end. And the second modular set I would highly recommend comes in the Kang scenario pack and it is Kang Master of Time. Not only it gives you another variant of Kang, but this time as a minion with toughness and villainous, uh, it also gets plus one for each obligation in your play area so he can become pretty powerful uh, he comes with a couple of more obligations called the fear of kang which says you cannot attack kang that includes this variant and all the other iterations of kang so that can be pretty brutal if you have an attack focus deck has a few ancient grudges that uh, allow him to attack you and if he's not there goes get the variant of kang and puts him into play has the Light of the Chronosphere, uh, Light of the Century Sphere, which discards cards when defeated uh, to find a minion. And speaking of minions, we have a few time displaced soldiers uh, that have Insight and Surge and deal yourself extra encounter cards. So this one is thematic and also a little harsh. And then finally, again, super thematic, we are gonna add Modoc uh, as our last recommendation for thematics. Again, because of the Ant-Man Quantum Mania, uh, I think it's just super thematic to add Modoc. If you haven't seen, I played a game, Ant-Man and Wasp. You can check it out where Modoc came out a couple times with the enhancements and obviously the doomsday chairs here that add uh, nasty side schemes to that. So those are my recomm recommendations to increase the overall thematics of this scenario. All right, now you're looking to increase your challenge factor, but here, so let's start with a light one. Uh, I really recommend the experimental weapons to just, if you want a, just a slight increase in the difficulty. Uh, this is a very small modular set, again, because I don't want to dilute too much of what Kang is actually trying to do with a, uh, a crowded modular set with eight, nine cards. So I think this, for me, uh, really hits the bill. It makes that little a little bit more difficult. He's got all these nice little up upgrades but again it's not the biggest challenge but it is you know an interesting upgrade to Kang and again still feels really really thematic playing him the second suggestion and this one's gonna really pop off that difficulty Kang really really wants to play off his obligations and I really want to play off this card past machinations again that's really focusing on obligations and there is no better modular set than what we got from Mojo Pack the sitcom modular set it comes with the breakup uh, which each encounter card gains peril that means nobody can respond uh, and actually adds a hazard card the watch me play uh, that insights three and then if you look up a rule if you ask a question about a rule you get confused it's i think it's super funny this one the family matters which is very very dangerous that says each uh, of your support cards is blank. So Avengers Tower, Avengers Mansion, those all go away. You don't draw cards from those anymore. So this one is brutal. The Growing Pains, that all of your upgrades cost two more. And then finally, the Odd Couple, that reduces your ally limit by two. But if that wasn't enough to help you to make this harder, 
the mojo in the middle environment says each obligation gains an acceleration icon. So this can really, really speed up the game in, in Kang's favor. And again, once this is revealed, once you hit that as an encounter card, it is there for the game. There is no other um, environments in this one. So this is really going to pump up the difficulty uh, for Kang. And then finally, uh, again, another modular set that came with his kit, the Anachronauts. If you haven't tried Kang with the Anachronauts, get ready because it's pretty brutal. Uh, their side scheme that says you shuffle each of the temporal cards back uh, from the discard pile to the encounter deck. You got Kang's Chosens that are in sight and then they'll discard cards until you find a temporal minion. And then he has a slew of minions, Terminatrix that has Quick Strike and gives him two boost cards with Piercing, Death Hunt, Sir Bastion, Apocryphus, and Wild Run that makes you discard cards. Anyway, a really nasty team of minions here that can really, really put the hurt on the hero. And then finally, just for the lulls of the scenario, and this really is just basically for the lulls. Um, so Kang is purple uh, or mostly purple and blue. So I found all the modular sets that have minions of different colors. So we have the Kree Militants, if he wants to go with blue minions. So purple and blue. Uh, then I have the Band of Badoon, if you want to go purple and green, which I thought was pretty funny. And then finally, uh, we have the Space Pirates for purple and yellow. So there you go. And then as some of the other side schemes. Anyway, this is, again, that was just for the lulls. Then finally, here are some of the cards that I would, I would include in my deck if I was playing the uh, different aspect cards versus Kang. The first one is Psylocke from the Wolverine Hero Pack. Because of all the obligations, Confuse is going to be extremely important to be able to safely uh, flip down and not worry about the villain activating. Uh, so this one, she gets two Confuse counters on there, and these are extremely useful. Then I highly recommend Black Widow in protection. Again, she can use a mental resource to discard an advanced or an ill-timed uh, encounter card that you don't need right now. So very good. Then in Justice, we have Sonic Rifle and Concussive Blow from Miss Marvel and Venom. So these are, again, ways to confuse the villain. Again, super practical against Kang Master, uh, Kang the Conqueror. And then finally, in Leadership, there is nothing but in Basics. I highly recommend Professor X, who can thwart for three and confuse an enemy. And that's all for the suggestions. So this video has been going on already long enough, so I'm going to end it on that. I hope you enjoyed. Kang, if there's any modular sets that you think are more thematic, uh, more difficult, and more, um, or more just funny, uh, that you can just include please share those in the comments uh, i did want to put the infinity stones because i thought that would be good but since i already recommended it uh with um a red skull items like ah, i'm not going to recommend that one again because again variety is about the spice of life and about what i'm trying to showcase here so on that note uh if you haven't subscribed to the channel please subscribe put that little like button if you enjoyed this video and again just remember to have some fun and play the game. I'll catch you for the next uh, Villains Beyond. We're going to go in the galaxy's most wanted. Check it out later. Ciao, ciao.